Spence, the evil genius, with your WordPress tip of the day. Okay guys, today's an important lesson, a very simple one, but one really important for optimizing your client checkout procedure when you're using our Responsive Lab Zip or any other WordPress theme for that matter. But I'm going to always show you this on our Responsive Lab Zip theme because that's what we're using in all our videos. Now, what do I mean by optimizing the checkout? Well, basically, let's assume for the sake of this tutorial that you're selling a digital product that does not require shipping or a physical billing address. Well, if you're a client and you want to download a, a digital product from you, why do you want to go through all of the hassle of putting in your country and your first name and your last name and your company name and the address and the suite and the town and the city and the zip and the shipping address and oh my god it's so much work wouldn't it be easier if all you had to do is just give your email and maybe your first name and last name and boom you're out of there of course it would that means happier customers it means more conversions more sales more money more partying more fun Woo! all right well, i think i just rebounded on my microphone scary okay I'm getting excited. Let me show you how easy this is. Now, fortunately, we're using WooCommerce as the basis for our uh, LabZip uh, solution. And WooCommerce 2.0 specifically is really optimized for speed and efficiency, but they've given you some things called hooks and filters within the WooCommerce, in addition to having template pages. And real quick, I'm going to show you how to use some hooks and filters along with a basic function to go ahead and eliminate or unset these fields that we don't need on the checkout page. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the template magic to get rid of the label and this extra checkbox. Are you excited? So am I. All right, let's jump in. What we're gonna do is open up our FTP editor here, and I'm using our demo site. And what I did just to back you up is to show you, I'm under themes, and I'm using our responsive lab zip child theme, which again is an advantage because every one of these changes we make will be protected no matter whether you update the responsive parent or do other stuff, and that's a great thing. It also gives us the ability to work with our custom functions file and to have some styling and other things, including the WooCommerce template pages. So step one is we're gonna open up our functions PHP file. Now, if you're using another WordPress theme, you can adapt the same idea here. Just remember, if you're working on a parent theme, that your functions PHP file will be overwritten whenever you update that theme. So you might wanna consider building a quick child theme. Follow one of our videos on how to do that. In our case, the responsive lab zips are already a child theme, so we're gonna open it up with our Smoltron editor. And when we do, we're gonna see uh, something we've kind of seen before, no, no big surprise here. There's a bunch of stuff in here. But I'm going to give you real quick by the magic of undo, whoops, here's the code that we're going to add in. Now, for our responsive lab zip functions file, you can add that in the area right at the top where it says add any of your own custom functions below. And right above the, you know, body press, BB press stuff. This area here is safe to put it in. Now, let me break it down real quickly. You don't have to be a developer here. But we've done two things in this. First of all, we've added a filter that hooks into the WooCommerce checkout field. Or it should I should say that gets injected at the point of the hook called the WooCommerce checkout fields. Actually, in this case, the the language I'm using is irrelevant because most of you, I'm assuming, are not developers. So just understand what we're doing here is we're basically saying, hey, we want to add some new code and we want to put it at the place where there is either an action or a filter or a hook that's called WooCommerce checkout fields. And we're going to call this new function we're adding custom override checkout fields. So this is the name of our function and this is the place in the WooCommerce plugin that we're injecting all of this good stuff. And then right below, here is the function that we've created. Again, notice the name is the same. Remember, that's how we say to it, connect the two. And we also basically put in here that we're going to be changing a bunch of these uh, variables uh, called fields. And what we're saying is we want to unset all the ones listed below. Now, if you're not familiar with which ones are available, that's okay, WooCommerce has a very nice help page, which I'm gonna reference here, that gives you a full list of all the checkout fields, both for billing or shipping, or for account or order. And in this case, you can also use some common sense because you can go over here and see country, first name, company name, address, and so far, so on. So if we go back over here, you can see, I could get rid of the first name, I could get rid of the last name, I can get rid of the company, I can get rid of the address. So if I was to get rid of all of these, 
and I save this functions uh, PHP file. Let's go over here and reload the page and see what happens. Wow. Is that nice? Look, we got rid of everything except for the email address. Now, in my case, I oftentimes want to have the client's first and last name. So I'm going to actually remove those two choices and I'm going to unset all of the other fields. And when I do, I get this nice setup. I get the first name, last name, email, boom, really efficient, really fast. Okay, now we have one other thing we want to deal with. The shipping address over here is kind of not necessary, right? And unfortunately, it's not a field, so I can't unset it but what I can do is eliminate it. Now, I can certainly do this via CSS and just hide it, but I'm gonna do it in a better way. I'm gonna use the templates that are included inside of WooCommerce. And if you notice, I'm gonna go over here to my WP Content folder, Plugins, into WooCommerce, and you'll see that there's a Templates folder. If I open that up, and I go over specifically to the Checkout subfolder, you can see that I've got a variety of forms here, including one called Form Checkout. And this is when I open it up, the place where I'm going to find the fields that are located on this page. Now, if I wanted to, I could go to this column two, where it's got the WooCommerce checkout shipping uh, action. And I could just delete it and save it and watch what happens. It'll go away. But the problem there would be what happens if I update my WooCommerce plugin, which I'm going to do, of course, all the time. I would lose it. So the next best thing is I want to make a duplicate of this particular PHP file from the WooCommerce plugin inside of my child theme. And that's going to accomplish the same thing, but with the benefit of protecting it against any updates or upgrades. All right. So what we want to remember is the name is form-checkoutphp. And we also want to remember that it was located inside of the checkout folder or subfolder. Okay. So let's go back over here now to our child theme, responsive labs it, and you'll notice we've got a WooCommerce folder. I can add a new folder, which I'm going to call checkout. So it has the same exact directory structure. And now I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call that the same thing as before. And remember, what was it called? It was called form dash checkout PHP. Okay. New file form dash checkout PHP. And then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to go ahead and paste in what I just did, what I just copied from the WooCommerce plugin. And now I'm going to delete that section. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now when I reload the page, it should still be gone if everything went well. And it is, it's gone, you see? And I can test this by going ahead and undoing my delete, saving it, reloading it, and it should pop back in. And it does. So I know I did the right thing in the right place. So now what we've accomplished when I resave it is we've streamlined our checkout process. Now all we need is the billing address, first name, last name, email, and we're good to go. And I'm sorry, not even the billing address, just the first name, last name, and the email. You know, I see one other thing I don't like so much, and I'll show you what you can do. I don't want to call this billing address anymore, so let's call it something more meaningful. And you'll notice that I can get to that now because I've got an action here that says do the checkout billing. Well, let's apply the same logic. If I go back over here into my WooCommerce plugin under WP Content, Plugins, WooCommerce, and I look under the templates, under checkout, I will see form billing. And I'm going to open that up. And you'll notice here's where I've got, aha, there's that title, right? So let's do the same thing. I'm going to create a new template. I'm going to copy the old content. And remember, this is called form billing PHP. I'm going to go ahead back into my director here at WP Content, Themes, Responsive Lab Zip. I'm going to go into WooCommerce. Now I'm going to go ahead and add inside of the checkout a new file. I'm going to call it form billing PHP. And just like before, I'm going to go ahead and edit it with Smoltron. Where is Smoltron? Paste. Now I'm going to change that name. So again, instead of being um, what we were saying before, billing address, I'm going to call it customer info. Right now, remember this can be translated because it's got right here the localization uh, 
code that allows this to be translated by, let's say, our code styling localization plugin. But since you have control over the template files anyway, this is a great way to get it the way you want it the first time, and down the road you can always retranslate this. And when we reload, there you go. Hey guys, you're a pro developer today. Just follow these simple instructions, and if you're on one of our subscription plans, you can get all the code we've included here in the tutorial. No problem at all. If you have any questions at all, you can reach us over at firstwebdesigner.com or labzip.com. This is Spence, the evil genius. I'll see you next time.